We're, we're professionals. Rise above it. Come on. <laughs> um, hey, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm here today with Ben. Hey, Ben. Hi, Christian. How's it going? So nice of you to pull yourself away from vacation and uh, <laughs> enjoy the interview. Well, we're benefiting from the, the home privileges. <laughs> That's right. Well, hey, Ben, so people that don't know you, for those three or four people in the world that don't know you and get spammed continually by your company – uh, with your face on stuff, uh, what? Who are you? What do you do? Where are you located? All those details. Sure thing. So I'm Benjamin Nylon. I'm MVP and uh, Microsoft RD, and a work at a company called Sheargate. Uh, there, I work as a head of product, trying to make sure we build best product possible and doing the best we can. Uh, we focus in two aspects. So we are in the productivity cloud. So with with Microsoft 365, we have a migration tool that's obviously very popular. Uh, which continues on to a governance tool as well. And in Azure, we have something that helps uh, uh, Azure Cloud Architects admins um, track their costs and manage to reduce them as much as possible, but also help by seeing anomalies and see what's going on to be efficient in the way they manage. So I think we're, oh, I missed. We're from Montreal and I'm currently at home in my backyard. Uh, we're all based in Montreal uh, at Cherigate. Yeah, it's a great facility there. I visited once. That was four years ago ah uh, yeah we even changed office we went we changed floors now it's uh i mean we just changed office and of course all of this happened so we're not benefiting it from uh much but it's a very beautiful location it. beautiful uh, office so very excited are there are there slides or firemen's poles or anything in between <laughs> connecting there's a there's a skate park there's the traditional barista in the corner uh, but other than that i mean really great but we decide we focus more on meeting rooms and trying to get work done uh, but we do have a uh, quite a bit of fun stuff to get around well that's a pretty a basketball amazing court, building actually. i mean that whole <laughs> building is really what was yeah, it previously um it's um they used to build like wires for like it's big uh, engineering company but back then really focused on copper wires and so on i forget exactly but yeah, it was like um, manufacturing, it, but it was like yeah. a factory. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It was a giant factory uh, that got transformed into uh, our offices, amongst many other offices, of course. And aren't there living spaces as well? Is there, Yeah, there people live in condos at the top. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. <laughs> it's I mean, ecosystem. it's a cool building. Yeah, I would yeah. love something like that. Yeah, I love it. Love it. But, uh, well, what's real cool, I was thinking about uh, you know, having this conversation, and I'd love to get your perspective um, one of the, uh, you and I have talked about this, uh, of course, and uh, I, I was thinking about when I was talking with Ducks a week ago uh, about when Jeff Teeper came back on board. Um, in fact, uh, uh, Beatrice Oliveira with Bind Tuning, and she and I were talking about this as well. So it's uh, something I've been thinking about the last couple of weeks. Um, one of the conversations that I had with uh, Teeper when he was coming back into his role. He left for a couple of years, uh, you know, has long time been kind of the leader of the SharePoint world now has Microsoft Teams, but he talked about, um, or we talked about how this then burgeoning area of, uh, of uh, ISVs that were building solutions around the look and feel for SharePoint, that he saw that with what they had planned for SharePoint, that a lot of those companies would go away. Now, since then, what we've seen is, you know, kind of a resurgence of, of SharePoint and the look and feel, of course, it is just a much different looking product. They, they've achieved so much. It's really cool. And yet that category of providers has exploded. So kind of my question for you is looking at the broader, more broadly at the ISV space, um, you know, kind of how does it look from an ISP perspective working within the Microsoft ecosystem and specifically around SharePoint and Teams? Um, that's a really good question. Great to, to start. I can hear construction in the back. So the joys of working outside. Um, it's a really good question. I thought we would ease into something a little bit easier at first. <laughs> no, no way. We're going to just jump right in. Um, I think it's uh, very, um, very different in the sense that in the past, 
the M Microsoft ecosystem was, okay, they built something every three years, which meant that they would likely miss something. And what we mean by that is that they, they would do a lot of research um, and then they would build the product in the best way they thought possible to meet those customer needs and then they would ship it. And that allowed customers or vendors like us to be able to identify pain points um, when they were released. And we had at least a you know, couple of years to be able to put ourselves inside, find a solution, build on top and evolve so much that we would have a extended value on top of it that would be hard for Microsoft to catch up. Today, Microsoft has completely changed. It's a, it's a SaaS company. It's a software as a service. They're product-led. They focus on metrics. They iterate quickly. If there's a customer pain, they attack it and they deliver it quickly. I think for ISVs, for companies that build product in that ecosystem, um, if, if, we're not, if we're taking it easy or too laid back at the moment, it, it might be quite dangerous for some of, some of the ISVs. Um, because by the time you identify what the customer pain you're trying to solve and then building it with your very few, um, you know, capabilities, whereas Microsoft has all the power of the hundreds of engineers or the marketing, it might be very difficult. So I would say that the landscape has changed. I find there's a lot of opportunities, <laughs> speaking of which, um, there's a lot of opportunities, but you have to um, change the way you work. And instead of you know, building these big solutions, we too all have to become uh, SaaS companies, but in the true mindset of it. So product led companies where we iterate quickly and adjust quickly. So very interesting. I don't know if I'm rambling on, but no, I find I, it a very know, interesting I, uh, I, period. I, I think kind of what you're identifying, I mean, there's not like a, you know, a single way of doing it. It's just, it, it, it is what more one of those kind of ongoing theme to, you know, topics to talk about, you know, what that actually looks like. Obviously, I, I'm not asking you to, to dig in and, and, and tell us like what Suregate is doing to kind of you know keep ahead of that specifically. I don't mind. I said, but it, I mean, it, but it has it changed. It, it's the, I mean, we all we all see it where it happens on a weekly basis. There are announcements coming out of Microsoft for mm -hmm. you know it, it might be small features and a lot of them are just incremental ads, but it's just a constant flow and it's of course across different workloads as well. But even if you look at one product, one workload, like Microsoft Teams in a 30-day period and go back and look at, and they're, and they're actually getting better at, they're, they're talking about roadmap things that will, are, are coming as well as the features that are released. Yeah. Um, for a while, I mean, it was very much, they're only talking about the things which are imminent that are yeah. being released or, or coming right out. And they're, they're talking more publicly about things that are down the road. So that ISV, so that you know, customers can start to plan around those things. But it kind of comes back to that, you know, like, so what do you do to to kind of keep in touch? And I mean, my thought was, uh, and again, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but um, you have to be more involved. It forces your hand to be more involved in the community, to be talking with customers, to be aware of what's happening with Microsoft, and to be out and tracking the trends of what's happening, yeah. where it's going. Absolutely. I mean, it's a combination of a couple of things, but you need to be more um, axed into what's going to happen next at Microsoft. So you have to understand. So we, obviously um, I have a competitive advantage where I have access to the NDA roadmap that Microsoft is, is building, right? As an MVP, as an RD that allows me to um, m make better decisions, but I can't do that just with that because they don't tell us everything, of course, and you have to kind of be able to see what is on their mind. If you understand what, you know, we always used to joke around back in the day of the, all like the sales people at Microsoft, like, oh, you're trying to meet your numbers. And, but now it's not the sales people. It's the product team that have metrics and they will impact you the most. So if you can understand where's Microsoft at right now, what are their goals and what are they betting on to get it? And you have some of the roadmap you can make, and again, nothing, if, if I knew exactly what we should do and when we should do it, and we'll all be millionaires, I hope. Uh, but the idea is you make the best decision that you can. And right now, if we analyze um, a little bit of the market, you know that Microsoft did an amazing job to get, they focused on engagement. So that means at first they weren't trying to build, 
the next greatest thing since sliced bread. They wanted to make sure that the SharePoint they had is used. They want to make sure that exchange that they have is used. So all you heard was metrics around the MAO they were talking about often. Monthly active usage. How many monthly active people, users, um, do you have? And all their focus was to make sure that on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, you had people that wanted to use their product and used it. Today, that's not what I'm detecting anymore. So I have to be mindful of that because what, are, what am I detecting is now they feel that they've got enough users. They've got enough active users in the market. And it looks like they're behaving into what we call in product monetizing, right? So what they want now is how do I take the people that I have that are here every week and every day and every month and how do I convert them to paid users? So that's where we start seeing more and more features that are for E5, for Azure AD Premium. This is gonna come out, but this is gonna be for a premium feature. So what we're gonna see more and more is how can they build stuff that's going to increase the um, AR, so the, the, the value that they get from the customers that they have that are already regularly engaged. Um, and that creates opportunity as well, because as they focus on trying to make uh, monetize their current users, that can provide opportunities for ISVs to pinpoint a, a problem and solve it in a different way while they're trying to focus on monetizing their existing users. But a lot of hard work. Yeah, I think that there's, uh, you know, while you're talking about that, building out and focusing on monetizing those customers that they have, I mean, part of what is, uh, I think, you know, at the opposite end of that, you have like the release of the free version of Teams. You're pushing mm -hmm. out to the masses of that long tail. And so, yeah, yeah it makes sense. I, and I, I mean, I guess it's arguable that they ever stopped looking at that perspective, but I think you're spot on. I mean, they used to develop a lot of features, a lot of capabilities, but until they started really uh, launched into Office 365, they never really focused on, they weren't certainly weren't being measured on whether people actually use that. And when, I, I think that the big breakthrough for a lot of people inside of Microsoft, especially on the sales side of the organization, it was when large organizations, massive customers that affected their numbers, stopped yeah. renewing their enterprise agreements, uh, you know, or, or you know, reducing that. And that, that caused, I mean, there, there were, that was a discussion point in the community, certainly in the MVP and RD communities, around the fact that you know, uh, uh, Microsoft was they were signing all these 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 new clients, but that hurts the long term uh, bottom line of the company if you sell a hundred licenses to a company and yet only twenty people are using the tool. Yeah. When it comes up to the end of the year, the company of course would say we're only going to sign on in these twenty people. We're only twenty yeah. licenses, not a hundred licenses. And, and, and then there's, of course, fake info, and then there's right? added value. Of course, it's like if you're not using it, means you're not getting value productivity. Yeah. Collaboration is not happening as well. Or you're using another product. And that's where I think they lost in a lot of spaces because they thought SharePoint was doing an amazing job or amazingly well because the licenses were being sold. But then if you went to the organization, it was installed. But the usage, you know, for so long in the community, I heard uh, talks and I was one of them as well. We were doing talks and, and sessions on how to increase adoption. Like why, right? It's, some, it's such an effort to, to make people use the product so what would customers do is they they would have the license microsoft thought they were doing well and then of course when you went to go see that company the users went and went on dropbox and they found other solutions use the file share still send attachments via email and then you realize that oh so if a competitor comes they could take the customer away from microsoft easily because the user's not really invested in the platform and that's what switched with Office 365. And I think that's why at first they, uh, you know, affordable Office 365, we give you everything, but we're going to measure all of our teams on how frequently do people come back and use it. And once they got the hook in and everyone or millions of users worldwide are now actively using the app, all, all of the apps all the time. I think Teams is still in its beginner stage. So Teams must still be in engagement mode. Um, but now it's like, okay, so now that we have these millions per, per week, per month, how can we make them go to E5? How can I increase the value of my customer that is already using my product? And if they failed, the customer is still on Office 365, so they can try again. Well, it, that's why I think so many of the features that we see, um, it has more to do with 
um, building those consistent behaviors across across the workloads. I, I always use the example of going into any workload, any product uh, within the Microsoft ecosystem and hitting the share button. As you're well aware, uh, you know, two years ago, you'd hit the share button in five different products. You've yeah. had five different experiences, the menus, the options, even the same, uh, the, 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 the verbiage, the, the, yeah. the, you know, the phrasing was different. different. And so they said, you know, and, and another great example was as we'd always ask is like, why is uh, OneDrive and OneDrive for Business, which is SharePoint, why does it look entirely different than when I go into SharePoint and I'm doing the same thing? Isn't it just a, another type of document library and shouldn't it yeah. look and function the same way? And it was kind of a big deal when they they revamped the look and feel and and there's the little issues with the sync engine you know, but yeah, that had to be fixed as well. Um, but the the look and feel and the way that we approach it, where it should look exactly the same, function exactly the same, the same, and in the share button, if I go hit a share and share to email, it should look and operate exactly the same, no matter what workload I'm going through. Um, and that's something that a lot of these incremental behaviors, like I just uh, I just did in the GlobalCon event, I did a session on uh, uh, tasks, task management across Microsoft 365. And so many of the little innovations are coming across and where we see advances. I mean, right now that you have, uh, uh, you have cool alignment between planner and to-do and to some degree to, to project online, although there are still gaps that are there, a lot of the integrations and in between the list apps, uh, the list app and the task apps, which are both coming, uh, it, so that it, it all the you know, works the same way. And I, while they're there, I'm not, not trying to say that there's going to be uh, you're going to be able to go create a, a task anywhere you are within Microsoft 365. Uh, you know, but there that path is there, that roadmap, you know, that future look. I can imagine that if I'm co-editing a word doc or an excel spreadsheet with three people in the middle of the night uh you know and we're in there i can at mention somebody and it creates a to-do notification which automatically yeah. shows up um that you could then you know possibly right there from that interface i could see being able to promote that notification into a task within planner for that project where that document lives uh, you know, a bunch of that kind of stuff. That that's what Microsoft is going to do to bridge the gaps, which helps um, both with uh, providing richer data, richer interactions for those E5, those more expensive licenses, as well as just uh, uh, helping with that adoption usage capability. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a but yeah. I, it I is challenging it. in the I ISV space for sure. Yeah. Um, we have to look into, so you're asking like, how do we look into, well, we try to do our best to understand what they're trying to do at Microsoft, what is the roadmap, and then making the best decisions with the data we have. I always like to, to ask people the, the question kind of on the back, and maybe this was the easier question you were looking for. Um, <laughs> ben, what's your favorite color? No, uh, the, no. Uh, so how do you personally, individually, kind of keep up? What are your favorite go-to sites or resources to keep up with what's happening? A good question to be honest I, I don't think i keep up as well as i did um i think that's the right answer no, none of us really do you know because yeah. <laughs> i i mean uh, a lot of the times i realize that once it's actually publicly announced i still have time to figure out okay one i i do keep up with everything announced as much as possible whether it's on twitter because i, fo I follow the right the all the people in the product team uh, that in at least the product marketing, which I know are going to talk about their releases at some point. So on Twitter, I've reduced quite a bit the amount of people I'm following to make sure that I get um, the content that I want specifically to go get when I go there. Um, the roadmap, the tech community, and I'm always on the watch on, on what's going on. But more, um, again, part of the uh, MVP slash RD, we have bi-weeklies, we have calls. So I always kind of really see where, where they're going in, uh, in ahead. But it might be in a year that it comes out and it might be a little bit different, but it's still, I just type, take notes as I go. If Otherwise, what I would be doing is really focus on, uh, there's a tech community website where they share all their blogs, all their release. There's a roadmap, uh, roadmap site, which I know some companies have even built a custom tool that every day analyzes everything that was added, everything that was removed, and it just pulled a difference type of thing. 
Um, and then I follow the right people on Twitter. Um, and that's usually, I mean, knowing the right people is you just go on the blog, you see who wrote it, who communicated, and it comes down to the same 10 people uh, in Office 365 about. So it's not too much uh, to follow you. Yeah, the, 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 I think that's the uh, you know, sort of right answers, you know, the, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the common uh, tools there, as you said, Microsoft Tech Community, I, yeah. I, always, I point people to where you get a lot of that, you know, where do you actually start? I said, go, go take a look at the Microsoft 365 blog. Yeah, it's yeah. those 10 people that are actively blogging, sharing the information that's happening. And that's who I, you know, I, I get to go and follow. I mean, there's certainly other community resources that are out there. I'm a fan sure. of there's you tons. Know, Daryl there's and tons. Daniel and Alistair and the, the regarding 365 team. Yeah, um, then I'd have to pick one and then I'd forget someone. So right. the official, the official Microsoft one is, is the one I recommend. But yes, tons of people in the community have done some great job, uh, re regular podcasts, and there's tons and tons of ways to get your information. Yep. Well, that's great. Well, well, Ben, really appreciate your time chatting today and uh, let you get back to enjoying time out in the backyard with the dog <laughs> and the beautiful weather. Um, appreciate it. You no, know, and and uh, so I think in in Montreal. So you're in your summer period that ends in what two weeks? And then winter again? Or? <laughs> no, our, our summer is actually pretty hot and pretty long. Just like our winter is pretty cold and pretty long as well. So we basically have. We always joke. We say we have three seasons um in montreal we have winter summer and construction um <laughs> and that's that's pretty much what it is is the winter is super long it's cold it's but the summer it's really hot and we enjoy it uh usually uh obviously these days uh, not so much um, but we do the best i can with what we got i think we've got those construction weather patterns down here <laughs> i'm joking that the the freeway that the, there's just it's so much growth that's happening here when we moved uh, from Seattle to Utah four years yeah. ago, this section of freeway was all under construction, still all under construction. It's just wow. it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, good times. Well, hey, Ben, uh, hope to see you uh, sooner rather than later, maybe Hopefully. October. October, Hopefully. I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. But uh, great talking to you. Cheers. Wow.